Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of the sinner, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that will bring forth his fruit in his season, and his leaf shall not wither, but whatever he does shall prosper. Good evening. Hello. This is Pastor Sam May with the Living Bible Church, Tacoma, Washington, and we're so glad you came to be with us in our Bible study time. We call this Bible study time Word Alive. That's what we call it. God's Word is quicker and sharper than a two-edged sword, and it cuts asunder, and it knows what's going on, on the inside of us. There's life, and it gives life in God's Word, and so we praise Him that we have the opportunity to be with you again uh, that we might share a word with you uh, to help us in uh, learning and help us in growing in the Lord. Hey, would you help us get the word out uh, that we have these teachings on um, Deliverance BC Tacoma Facebook page and also the Deliverance BC Tacoma uh, YouTube page. You can get it on one or the other. Um, they first come uh, on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. and they later can be seen by recording on either DBC Tacoma Facebook or DBC Tacoma YouTube at a later time. The issue is we just want you to help us share the word of the Lord with uh, other believers, uh, other believers and, and invite them and let them know when we're coming on. Let them know that these are available, that they can they can, they can come and view them at what time would be best for them. Uh, but the main thing is we want the Word of God to flourish in the lives of His people. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, we do post our notes uh, from our teachings to our DBC Tacoma Facebook page. You can go and get those notes and uh, download those and uh, we try to make those accessible to you so that you can have something written in front of you already. And as we go through, you could add some things or thoughts to come to your mind. And also you could have them as a reference to fall back on. Notes are good to have a, as a reference to fall back on. So we encourage you to get those, those notes and hopefully they are helping you. So God's good. God's awesome. Our God is kind. Let us go to our great God in a, in a word of prayer. Father, you are uh, our keeper. You are our way maker. You are our miracle worker. You are our strength when we're weak. You bring light to our darkness. You love us. You, you, you've saved us in our confession of faith in Jesus Christ. And you watch over us. And you provide all our need according to your riches and glory. So we just said thank you. Thank you because you do all things well in our lives. Thank you that you do what's best in our lives. God, help us to recognize that you always do what is best. There are times that uh, things don't line up according to our uh, specific specifications and uh, our agenda. But God, you do what's right. Help us to remember that your agenda is the best agenda. So thank you for your son, thank you for your word that we get to share tonight. Thank you for your Holy Spirit who helps us in this journey. Thank you, Father, that you have not left us here on this journey alone, but you sent us the comforter, the promise of the comforter, the Holy Spirit, to help us, to guide us, to strengthen us, to uh, do in us and through us that which we certainly cannot do on our own, even obeying you. We need the help of the Holy Spirit. So thank you, God, for providing all things uh, well in our lives. And I pray tonight that you would uh, help us in your word, help us gain understanding uh, what, from what we see in your word, that we might rightly apply it to our lives. 
Edify your people, glorify your name. You awesome God, you are mighty God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, bless the Lord. We're, we're, we're yet in the book of First Corinthians. Uh, we started in chapter 14 last week, and we're going to pick up in chapter 14 this week and finish the chapter out. Um, we were looking at this past, uh, the past lesson on Paul and his teaching on, on the right use of tongues. Um, tongues is a gift given. We see that in, in 1 Corinthians. It was given to tongues. Paul also said that everybody doesn't have every gift. Everybody doesn't necessarily, everybody does speak in tongues. Everybody doesn't uh, prophesy. He, we talked about that earlier, but uh, the issue here with, with those two is he wanted to make sure that the church understood the right use of prophecy and the right use of tongues, especially if you would, now we come into the worship setting, the worship setting, um, he wanted them to do, uh, uh, I call it orderly worship, sir, orderly, not necessarily in order, because uh, oftentimes in our our services, we have a uh, what we call a bulletin or whatever you call it that gives a order of service going from one thing to the next, uh, which are good because they, they can give some guidelines. Uh, but he, he's, he's concerned about orderly, orderly service, service that is, there's no confusion or disorder in the service. Okay, so that's why I called it orderly worship service. So we're going into 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and I'm going to read and talk a little bit. Some of it, I got several uh, points there since they're there for you. Uh, on, uh, underneath the, the major idea, then I don't, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time in them because we hopefully they'll be uh, self-explanatory from the scripture. But anyway, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, he opens up at verse 20, coming from verse 19. He says, Brother, do not be children understanding, however in malice be babes, that's harmless, but understanding be mature. He, he still, he's saying to them again, you need to grow up in your understanding. One of the issues uh, that Paul talked about way back in uh, uh, the opening opening uh, chapters he, he said that they were immature. And uh, he opened up the book talking about the immaturity because they had all this stuff going on. They had cliques in the church. And uh, he said, you, you're acting like mere men. You're acting kind of like mere men. He said, I want to feed you with meat, but I had to give you milk because you haven't grown up. So this idea of growing up, whenever we talk about growing up in the Lord, is about spiritual maturity. It's about spiritual growth, uh, which comes when you gain understanding. As you understand, you should be applying that understanding that you more you understand from the Word of God. You should be applying that, and therefore, growth will take place in the application of the Word in your life. So he comes again here, and in verse 20, he says, Grow up. Grow up in your spiritual understanding. So he's going to give us some specific things here again as we go through about what they need to grow up because there needs to be orderly worship service. So moving on then down to uh, verses 21 and 22. Um, he tells them, In the law it is written with men of other tongues and other lips, I will speak to this people. And yet for all that, they will not hear me. Uh, says the Lord. He quotes here from Isaiah 28, uh, 11 and 12 uh, about the, the other tongues here. Um, for with stammering lips and other tongues, he will speak to his people um, to whom he said, this is, is, this is the rest with which, rest with which you may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. In other words, when he spoke to them uh, plainly through his word, they wouldn't listen. And the, the re and what happened, because they did not listen, they ended up going to bondage. They ended up being uh, overrun, and, and uh, the history is that they were taken captivity because they would not listen. But here is the thing. Those who 
uh, when they would not listen to the prophets, those who they sent, God sent in the Assyrians, the Babylonians and others to discipline the children of Israel. They spoke in what you would call foreign languages. They spoke in, a, they actually spoke in a lang language, language, which was different from the language that the Israelites spoke, but them coming in, if you would, and speaking to them, um, was about God disciplining them, if you would. Um, God used foreign nations, foreign speaking nations, Assyria, Babylon, and others, to discipline, uh, to discipline Israel. They they would not listen, if you would, to the the prophecy. The prophecy, uh, verse twenty two. Therefore, a sign uh, tongues are a sign, not for those who believe to but unbelief. It was a sign to those who who. Um, it was a, a sign to the here, unbelievers because the unbelievers were speaking to the children of Israel, but they, they had to learn that language. They didn't understand that language, okay? But this was part of the problem they brought on themselves by the disobedience. But he says in the rest of verse 22, while prophecy is for believers, when God spoke to them uh, plainly, they didn't listen. So he brought in... Uh, uh, people who would capture them, who spoke in other languages, if you would, that they did not understand. But this was because God had to had to discipline them. So He bring He brings this in um, the purpose of the tongues, of foreign languages was a sign of judgment for disobedient disobedient in uh, Israel. So He brings this in. Uh, to talk about the, the, the foreign language, the tongues, and then he begins talking about how tongues should be used, how tongues should be used in the church. He just does this introduction, but then he comes to talk about how tongues should be used in the church, okay? Um, he says down in verses 23 through 25, therefore, therefore, since what I just told you about the tongues up above, they, they would get that. But here he goes. Therefore, if the whole church comes together in one place and all speak with tongues and there come in those who are uninformed or unbelievers, will they not say you are out of your mind? Now, now look, look, look at the turn here. The turn before was when Israel was judged by God and went to captivity. It was the unbelievers speaking in tongues or if you would in foreign languages to the Israelites. But here is the turn. He says, if the whole church is in one place, we, we, call, the, uh, we call this the worship setting, and all speak with tongues, and there come in those who are uninformed or unbelievers, will they not say that you are out of your mind? Why? Because they come in, everybody is speaking. He says, all speak with tongues. Everybody is speaking with tongues then because there would be no understanding by those who come in, they would say, you are out of your, uh, all these people, they must be out of their mind. Now, th what they're saying doesn't make any sense. Listen, listen, um, I looked at, I found that some of y'all understand this gibberish, 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 gibberish. It's unintelligible or meaningless speech. Gibberish, you're talking gibberish. That means I don't understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. This is what they would be saying. Why? Why would they say that? Because, listen, there would be no interpretation. This is the problem. If everybody's speaking in tongues at the same time, we, we go down this a little bit further, and there's no interpretation, there's no understanding. So it sounds it sounds like the people out of their mind. That's what he's saying there, okay? It's sometimes a baby talks, and a baby talking, when a baby hasn't learned how to find words, and they just put it out, but you know what I mean? You know, they would just be talking. You're talking, and you'd be saying, okay, uh-huh, but you don't know what they're saying. Gibberish. Paul is saying, if a say a person who is not saved, an un, he says, if an unbeliever, an uninformed or unbeliever comes in, and it's just gibberish, everybody's talking in tongues, listen to this, it sounds like gibberish. It sounds like gibberish. However, he says in verse 24, but if all prophesy, prophesy is speech that can be understood. 
speech that can be understood. You're going from speech that can't be understood. Everybody speaking in tongues to speech that can be understood. It says, and a person comes in, uh, uninformed unbeliever. He is convinced by all. He is convicted by all. And thus the secrets of his heart are revealed. And so falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is truly among you. Um, the, 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 the speaking so that things can be understood. They understand what is being said. But because everybody is speaking so it can be understood, Paul says this has a profound impact on the uninformed. This has a profound impact on the unbeliever to the point that the, 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 there's a God, God moved, moved this way that the secrets of their heart are revealed and they fall down and worship God and say that God is truly among you. Why? Because they understand what's being said. So therefore, I happen to know the unbeliever recognizes the power of God in the unity in the worship setting. Why? Because he can understand or she can understand what's being said. See, understanding is important because in understanding, um, you don't feel lost. In understanding, you, you can come to conclusions of what you need to do. And he says, this is powerful when there's what prophesying going on, when, when, when everybody is speaking so understanding can, can take place, even those who are unbelievers, even, even, even those who are uninformed, are uninformed, they walk in the church first for the first time, they're uninformed. L l listen, when people walk into churches, uh, especially if they not, have not been church, they, they don't understand what's going on. That's why we have to be careful sometimes with our church ease. I call it church ease. I, you know, this church ease is not speaking the tongue. Church ease is just using language uh, of the church ease language. You know, uh, listen, they don't understand necessarily what's going on, but when you speak language, when you speak in a way, talk about God in a way, talk about God's people in a way where it's plain and not the church ease. Listen, unbelievers understand, and he says here. In this case, when there's prophecy spoken and everybody is speaking prophecy so it all could be understood, this has a tremendous impact on the believer's life. A I'm sorry, on the unbeliever's life, a tremendous impact, okay? So the unbeliever recognizes the power of God in the unity, in the unity in the worship setting. And that means there are the, those who are speaking uh, all speaking uh, prophecy, if you would, here, all speaking so that what is being said can be understood. There's unity that that and you can't you got to be on one accord to have unity. Everybody is speaking the same way there. Whatever whatever's being said, there's unity in what's being said. And Paul says here that that can have a great impact, if you would, on the unbeliever or the uninformed life. So he, he takes it there, and I just I put in, just so we could understand it, uh, would help me understand and get it, that uh, the tongues here, uh, without interpretation, tongues need to be interpreted. If they're not, it just sounds like a bunch of gibberish, gibber, 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 gibberish. I didn't put it in dictionaries, how do you pronounce it? Gibberish, y'all know what that is, okay? But words that are spoken, that are understood, can have a profound impact on even unbelievers' lives okay, in the worship setting, okay? So, he says there in verse 26 then, he simply says in verse 26, uh, how then, how is it then, brethren, whenever you come together, each of you has a psalm, has a teaching, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation, let all things be done for edification. Listen, all things... If it's a, if it's a psalm, in many times psalms were sang. Psalms were sang. When you look at many of the Old Testament psalms, they were songs that were sang on journey, whatever. Okay, so be it a psalm. Okay, this could be singing or reciting. Okay, the psalm, a teaching. Okay, 
has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation. And please notice, he still, he puts, has a tongue, and he puts in, has an interpretation, because there's got to be interpretation. A revelation needs to be explained, but please notice if it's a tongue, there has to be interpretation. Why? Because of the, let all things be done for edification. Edification to build up spiritual profit or advancement the aim of worship of the worship setting is the edification of god's people the building up of god's people the spiritual advance part of growing is receiving the word and understanding the word and 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 the worship setting need, needs to be is a is a vital part of that now we have we have bible studies and, and things absolutely we, we 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 need those but listen and the worship setting is is important, okay, that edification takes place. Edification should take place in Bible study too. But here he's talking about the worship service. So God's people, God's people need to be built up. God's people need to be uh, uh, growing, built up, spiritual edification, spiritual profit. or uh, God's people ought to be advancing spiritually. If you're not advancing spiritually, you're not growing spiritually. Okay. And advancement means that they shouldn't be stagnated. They should be growing, growing in their understanding and learning how to use God's word in their lives, growing in their obedience. Okay. But that can't happen if there's no under, if there is no understanding. So, so be it a psalm, a teaching, a tongue, a revelation, there has to be interpretation because all of those go into edification and where there is no understanding, there won't be any edification. So the aim of the worship service, the aim of the worship service. And of course, the, 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 the other part of that too, um, and he doesn't mention it here, but I'll bring it out. The aim of the, the worship service really is to, is to focus on God. It should be to focus on God, God's glory. To focus on him. That's part of it too. Okay. So it's not just showing up. It's not just being a a, a spectator or, or, or a looky loo. Okay. It's not uh, it's not us just showing up or us just showing off. You know, show up and show off. They use that phrase, show up and show off. That's not what it is. It's the focus is not the focus is not the people the focus is the god of the people that it work now there's people involved in that okay but if the focus is the god of the people that's where the focus needs to be because god's people need to be edified edified okay so let me let me move a little bit let me move just a, a little bit further here so what what he does is uh I, I call this 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 next this next portion a guidelines for speaking in tongues in worship because he he comes back to that why does why does Paul have to do this especially with the speaking in tongues because remember and we saw last week that people were abusing the gift P people were using the gift for their own purposes perhaps to make themselves look good to make themselves feel better than others uh, even though Paul had said earlier everybody don't have the same gifts. They they had lost they had they had misunderstood that their gift was not to make them look good, but the gift was to be used to edify the body of Christ, to build up the body of Christ. Okay, and so there were those who were using th this particular sign gift as something to you know to draw attention to themselves, if you would. So he he comes back now again, uh, as we're saying in the worship setting. Uh, so what he does here, I call this guidelines for speaking in tongues in worship. Here you go. Here you go. If anyone speaks in a tongue, let there be two or three at the most, each in each in turn. Okay, I'm gonna, I put a note in here on my thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mention it again. Not all at the same time. Ooh, God, that, okay. I just, did. you caught that, right? Let me catch you. Each uh, three, three, uh, two or three at the most, each in turn. You know, you know what having your turn means. You gotta wait till 
the other person finishes or whatever you 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 can't be doing it while somebody else is doing it because you know what it's not your turn this is what will you say somebody why well, would it what's not your turn you you gotta wait wait your turn when it's your turn you can do what you're supposed to do but you gotta wait don't be barging in on nobody else don't be cutting trying to get in front of nobody else don't be trying to get attention from somebody else don't try to get the attention on you by by speaking out of turn that's good that's good okay okay not all at the same time listen listen and let one interpret but there if if there is no interpreter let him keep silent in the church and let him speak to himself and to god so here's I'm just going to repeat what I just said to you. Here's the guidelines for speaking in worship. Please get a hold of this. Okay. Here's the guideline. Here's the guideline. Limit to three speaking in tongues in one setting. This is, isn't this something? He says, if anyone speaks in a tongue, let there be two or three at the most. At the, at the, didn't that, that, yeah, at the most. At, at the most. Let there be two or at the most, at the most, three, each in turn. So, listen to this. Limit to three speaking in tongues in one setting. Only one speak at a time. Only one speak at a time. Uh, we can understand this from just language and talking to people. If both people are spoken at the same time, if you get two people talking at the same time, even if other people are listening, they got to try to figure out who to listen to. And sometimes they will miss what's being said. Why? But listen, uh, uh, walkie talkies are good at this. Walkie talkies, y'all who used to have um, uh, C beers, C beers, old school C beers, C beers. Um, then you know that when you was in your car, in your truck, or whatever, both of y'all couldn't talk at the same time. Both of y'all couldn't do it. So you had to say something, and uh, uh, it would be. Hey, good buddy, get back, get back, means say something back to me. Uh, 10, 10 to 40, Roger, means say something to me. But both of you couldn't speak at the time, same time. If both of you were speaking at the same time, neither one of you would hear the other because you both had your button pushed down. To, to, to listen, you had to speak, you had to put the button down. But to listen, you had to let the button up on the microphone. So you both couldn't speak at the time. It was one at a time. One at one at a time. He says here, one at a time. Only one speak at a time. And then he says, there must be interpretation. There must be, I put must be interpretation or the speaker to keep quiet. Here's it. Verse 20, verse 28, verse 28. If there is no interpreter, let him Keep silent in the church. Let him who keeps silent in the church, the one who starts speaking in tongues. In other words, uh, l listen. In other words, the, the tongue should be Holy Spirit inspired. Okay, I, I'll just put it that way. Now, if if it's when it's Holy Spirit inspired in the worship setting, the Holy Spirit will also uh, give interpretation. Get, the Holy Spirit will also give interpretation. Okay. Because the Holy Spirit, God wants, if something is going out, God wants understanding. He wants understanding. And so therefore, he says, if, the, if you speak and there's no interpreter, let him keep silent and let him speak to himself and God. In other words, don't even open your mouth. Just inwardly speak to God. Why? Because there needs to be interpretation in the setting. In the setting. In the setting. And I'm just... Uh, I'm trying to stay on course here without going all, all over the place, but uh, this is being missed a lot of time, and that's all I'm going to say. I'm not trying to condemn nobody. I'm not trying to judge, but this this important issue is being missed, 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 missed. Be a mess, missed. Oh, my God. Oh, Holy Spirit, help me. It's being missed because it says one at a time, one at a time, and it must be interpreted. This is what he says. He said that last week. We saw that last week. Paul said, with well, there's tongues, there needs to be interpretation. Because, see, the tongue is not really for the benefit of the, the, the tongue speaker. The tongue is supposed to be for the benefit of those who hear. That's important for those who hear. So if there's no interpretation, then those who hear are not helped. So he says, if there is no interpretation, where am I at? Here it is. Uh, let me do it again. 
And we got to go on. Limit to three speaking in tongues, one setting. Why? Because if you get too much going, then people get they get bogged down in what what to remember. Okay, uh, only one speak at a time. Okay, that's the that's that's that that's important. Must be interpretation. A speaker there must be interpretation. Speaker is to be quiet. If there's no why? Because if there's no interpretation, there is no edification. And we saw earlier in verse 26, he said, let all, th all things be done. All things be done for edification. And if there's no understanding of what was said, if there's no interpretation of what was said, there is no edification. There is no edification. Okay, so he says those guys line, got lines down in uh, verses 27 through 28. Why? Because it needs to be orderly. Remember I said orderly in worship? It, it needs to be ordered, orderly. Things that are orderly uh, keep chaos from coming up. Things that are orderly. All right, so now you move then, you move then, you move then from... Um, from uh, speaking in tongues uh, needs to be to be orderly. Okay, verses twenty-seven through twenty-eight. Um, just just an aside. There are places where this is not happening, and I, I got to say there are places where this speaking in turn and there being interpretation. It's not happening. Now, I'm not trying to judge anybody. I'm not trying to condemn anybody. Okay. I know that people, uh, many times we, we, we imitate what we see. We imitate what we learn. We are creatures of, of imitation. Okay. But, but the issue is we got we to gotta come back to what the Bible says. What, what scriptures say. I'm going to leave it at that. We got to come back to what scriptures say. See, because um, the issue is uh, not my opinion. The issue is, what does the Bible say? And I'm not trying to go up into anybody on that, but we need to come back to Scripture. And what Paul says here is very plain. Okay, he says, he says down guidelines for speaking in tongues and worship. I call that, I call that guidelines, okay? And so, this is, these are guidelines, okay? That's, I'm going to leave that alone, I'm going to leave that alone. So, uh, moving on, moving on. When we get to First uh, Corinthians chapter fourteen, we're still there. Uh, verses twenty-nine through uh, thirty-two, he he gives some. I call the guidelines for prophetic speaking in worship. So there were guidelines for speaking in tongues in worship. Now I call this guidelines for speaking. Uh, Speaking prophetic, prophetic speaking in worship. Now you remember, uh, during this time, two things I want to say. During this time, they didn't have what we call the scriptures that we have them today. Okay, as today. Now remember that word prophetic could be, could be uh, prediction, but it also could be just speaking God's word. Okay, God gives something for somebody to. I'm sorry, God. Uh, from God's word, speaking God's word, from God's word. Okay, so, but here's the thing. So here's the thing when we look at this issue, there still needs to be order, order. For them, there, there could be, Paul, he spoke prophetically to the church because they didn't have a, when he, when he was writing, he was speaking prophetically the word of God. Okay, but so he's saying here, he's saying here to us, if you would, that even when you have uh, the speaking uh, of the word of God, okay, or if it was prophetic, a for him it was a, 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 a some understanding that God would bring to something. It still has to be order. Now listen to what he says here. Let two let two or three prophets speak, and let the others judge. Now this is important to. Well, let me read it. Let me let me read. let me go on then. I, but if anyone is, if anything is revealed to another who sits by, let the first keep silent, for you all can you you all can prophesy one by one. Here we go again. 
one by one, that all may learn and all may be encouraged. All may learn. Listen to what he says. You can't have everybody doing this. He says, he says, two or three prophets. Okay. But then he says, when they speak, and th this would be, this would be, this could be both a prophetic utterance from God, or we could look at God's word. Uh, speaking, Paul speaking prophetically, he wrote prophetically God's word. It could be, whatever that is, he says, there ought to be some um, others judge. In other words, there ought to be some other, if you would, quote unquote, people that the Spirit is revealing things to as the person is speaking. Let others judge. And then he says, but if anything is revealed to another, let the first keep silent. God kid one could start, but speak, speaking prophetically, though, is speaking plain. Speaking understanding, whereas tongues, they had to be interpreted. But this this case is the prop of the prophet speaking here, the prophetic speaking. This is plain. This is not this does not need tongue interpretation. OK. OK, so th let's look at what we have here. He says that uh, if this is going on, uh, he says three at the most again, but there needs to be some confirmation. OK. Uh, when there is confirmation and something is it also is being brought by another person, then the first person should keep side and God's taking it on. He didn't give it all to that one person. He's also getting someone else involved. Okay. He also says, um, uh, one by one, one by one, he says, for you can all prophesy one by one. Again, why one by one so that there will be it would be orderly and there will not be any confusion. And then he goes on to say that the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets. In other words, the speakers, the speakers, those who are speaking, must exercise self-control in giving prophecy because God, here it is, is not a God of disorder, which is verse 13, 33 says, for God is not the author of confusion of peace as in the churches of all the saints. So there still has to be order. There can't be uh, uh, everybody speaking at one time. He says that it's got to be um, one at a time, if you would. That's very, very, very important. Why? So learning can take place. Again, if everybody's this is again, this is, is everybody speaking plainly, but everybody's speaking. He could be speaking plainly, but everybody's speaking. Then again, you got this could just this could just come down to a lot of people speaking and nobody understanding what they're saying. Not tongues, but but plain language, but it's so much being spoken that you can't understand what's being said. And if you can't understand what's being said, listen, there, here we go back up to uh, the verse I read earlier. If there's no understanding in what's being said, verse 26, there is no edification. Understanding what's being said is so important because if we don't understand it, guess what? We can't use it. You can't use what you don't understand. Listen, listen, listen. What, what's said, how can I put this? What's said might be impressive. But if you don't understand it, it being impressive ain't going to help you. Not going to help you. Might sound good, but if you don't know, if you don't, if you can't use it because you don't understand it, it does not help you. And Paul, the whole thing was the edification and worship. And so there had to be some things done in an orderly manner so that the 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 aim of worship, the edification of the people, and I, I did add to that. He doesn't say it in the text, but also that we come to glorify God. If that understanding is not there, that's not going to happen. And he says, so here, verse 33 again, God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all the churches. So here you go, here you go, here you go to the other side. When, when stuff is not done in an orderly manner, 
be it uh, the speaking of the tongues, when stuff is not done in an orderly manner, uh, the, the prophet speaking, the, the confirmation, the judging, when these things are not done in an orderly manner, and the prophets, those speakers are just all over the place, here it is, God ain't in that. Ooh, that, yeah, God, God's not in that. God's not in there because you know why God's not in it? Number one, according to what Paul is saying here, and forget people are not edified. There's just a whole bunch of stuff going on. And it causes God's not glorified because they're not really being directed to God. Oftentimes, people are impressed by the person doing than the person that the person doing is supposed to be doing it for. The glory of God, the glory of God, but also the edification of God's people. So when that's not happening, you can have confusion. But he says here, God is not the author of confusion. He's not. Okay, so we have to catch that. Have to catch that. Okay, so um, God's not about disorder, but he's about order. Okay, he, he, okay let, me, let me move on. Um, limit three speaking confirmation uh, confirm first speaker be quiet off times one by one one by one oh my gosh one by one okay I hit that a little bit before but with the tongues but here it is again one by one um, and it's got the, the speakers must exercise self control for God is not the author of peace in all the churches Verses 32, the spirits of the prophets are subject to the, the, the prophets. Okay. Okay, let's move on a little bit here uh, down to 34 and 35. And let's see, we can, we can, uh, we, I'm going to give you this and then uh, I'll read the text. Then I'll, 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 some things here. Okay. Uh, here's the, here it is. Disruption in the worship setting must be addressed. I, I, I want to say that first. Okay. Disruption in the church service setting must be addressed. Paul says here, let your women keep silent in the churches for they are not permitted to speak, but they are to be submissive as the law says over. Uh, and and he, the law here is, is what he had way back in Genesis 3.16 where God said to the woman because of uh, because of which, what she had did by disobeying him, she's going to have a problem in childbirth. Uh, she says, you have desire for your husband and he shall rule over you. You will be submissive to him. We, we find that uh, submission thing repeated in uh, Ephesians 5.22, where God, uh, Paul said to the, uh, the, the wives at the church of Ephesus, Wives, be submissive to your own husbands as to the Lord. So this submission thing, okay, be to be submissive is, is, is in Genesis. And it's repeated for us. We see it in Ephesians because they didn't have the uh, quote unquote book of Ephesians, but it's in Ephesians also, okay. But, but stay with me here because this is important, okay. He says, um, uh, let your wives keep silent in the church where they are not permitted to speak. Then he says, and if they want to learn something, let them ask their own husbands at home for a shameful women to speak in the church. Now, let me, let me, disruption in the worship service, in the worship setting must be addressed. So the, I got this in your note, okay? Paul is not forbidding a woman from praying and prophesying when the church gathers. Okay, now, back in 1 Corinthians 11 and 5, he talks about women prophesying and praying and he he used the word uh, that the order would be with the head covered this is about um, being under authority being under authority because uh, even in the church there there is order in the church I mean in the, in the church setting again there's order in the church okay so so uh, this would be un, un, in order under authority in other words she just doesn't do this she just doesn't do this but she's under authority okay uh, so listen listen so he said 11 5 that women can prophesy and pray in the church so when he says here 
at first look when he says the women need to be keep silent for they are not permitted to speak it sounds like first impression is that Paul must be contradicting himself and some would probably use this this passage to say uh, women aren't supposed to talk in church okay okay well uh, Paul's not contradicting himself and let me let me let me put this in and, and, and move on. Uh, if Paul was contradicting himself, then the Spirit would be contradicting himself because it's the Spirit who caused Paul to write the letter to the church at Corinth. We, um, we believe that the Bible, Old Testament Scripture, New Testament Scripture, the, the writings were inspired by God. Nobody took it upon themselves to write. Even in the New Testament, the concerns that Paul writes about here, we believe that they were inspired by the Holy Spirit for him to write. Okay, inspired by the Holy Spirit for him to write. Peter said that no no prophecy, no word is of man's own interpretation. But holy men of God wrote as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So we believe that Paul was moved by the Holy Spirit to write this letter and uh, his letters to the church. Okay, so if Paul was contradicting himself, the Holy Spirit was contradicting himself too. I hope you got that. But listen, listen. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, and I got a note there for you. The the uh, complete word study Bible dictionary had to do the word study on that word speak. Remember back up in thirty first thirty four where he said it's not permitted for a woman to to uh, they're not to speak. Here's the thing. The complete word study Bible dictionary says the word for speak in verse 34 means to speak in such a way to cause confusion, which if you would fits in with this, the whole text here of, of, of this passage, because the issue was Paul wanted to make sure there was no confusion. Things would be orderly. So stay, stay with me for a minute then. So apparently when Paul wrote this, okay, uh, to the church, when, when this, this was the issue, some of the women in the church at Corinth were being disruptive in service by their talking by their talking in service because that word speak means and speak in such a way to cause confusion. That was the issue. So this is not a contradiction from 1 Corinthians 11 and 5. This is an issue of orderly worship. And and I put there, uh, I, I, I gave that, that, that thing here, the point of disruption in worship service must be addressed since he gives the order orderly you know things done in order if you would the way they should be done okay then these women and there were different ideas of what was going on here some were saying that the women couldn't hear because of the way of the seating in the setting they were were not close enough to be able to hear they didn't have uh, um depending on how large the gathering was, they didn't have the, the PA system that we have now. So some of them were, were loud and, and, and saying, I don't understand or whatever. So when, when you're loud like that saying, I don't understand, that can be a disruption. Don't know exactly what it was. That was one of the ideas. And the other one was um, because the uh, way things were in Corinth and came into the church, they were busy with the children. They had the children and they were being loud trying to, with the children, whatever it was, but whatever it was, it was when they were speaking, it was loud. They were calling, causing confusion. So Paul says here in, 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 in line with everything else he's saying here that, uh, the women causing confusion. Okay. Need to shut it down. Whatever, it, whatever it was, because that word speak means to speak, to cause confusion. Whatever it was, he said, shut it down. Okay. Be submissive to their husbands and let them, if they want to know something, ask their husband at home. That's the context. That is the context. Okay. He's not contradicting himself. The Holy Spirit is not contradicting himself. That is the context. So we got to understand that in the definition of how this is flowing. Women speaking in the worship service, women praying in the worship service is not prohibited 
It's just that some was just they was they was out of they listen, they was out of order. <laughs> okay, they were out of order. Okay. All right, let's move a little bit farther. We got a couple more um here. Uh first Corinthians fourteen, thirty six and thirty nine. Uh, or did the word of God come originally from you? We, we know the answer is no to that. Or was it only th that you that it reached? We know the answer to that is no to so both of those. But listen to what 37 says. If anyone thinks himself to be a prophet or a spiritual, <laughs> let him acknowledge that the things which I write you are commandments of the Lord. Okay, you claim to be spiritual, knowledgeable. You need to acknowledge that this is from the Lord. Now we... Paul wrote commandments. He did because what he's saying here uh, to be orderly, he's commanding order, if you would. He, he's telling them how to be orderly in the worship setting. OK, but here's the thing. He says these are commandments of the Lord. In other words, Paul, uh, here you go again. Paul was not taking it upon himself. He was saying that this is from the Lord. He he mentioned this at other times. He said, I gave you what I got from the Lord. And when he talks about the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ in um, uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15, we'll get over there later. And he says, I gave you what I received. I get, So he's given them, us, what he received from the Lord. So it is from the Lord. That's why some people say sometimes, well, I don't like Paul. Paul was a womanizer, but you got a misunderstanding of scripture. Paul never, he, he did not put women down. He this, this is about not him putting women down, but him speaking from the Lord on what needs to take, pl take place so they will remain ordered in the church. So when you get to this one, is if if you think you're a prophet, you you think you uh, you you uh, let him have knowledge that the things which I write are the commandments of the Lord. So Paul says, I'm 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 not the one. This this is coming from the Lord Himself. This is almost like a disclaimer. Now other times Paul would say, uh, I say this, but not from the Lord. He qualified it. Okay, but in this case he's saying this is from the Lord. So, uh, but if anyone be ignorant. Uh, let him be ignorant. If you reject the teachings and you're ignorant, don't, don't, don't see. Sometimes we try to convince people and it doesn't do any good because they're going to stay the way they are. And the, this was part of people at Corinth, especially those who thought that they were wise. They were wise in the world, but they were ignorant things of God. He said, if they ignorant, they, they going to be, ignorant. if you reject the teaching, if you reject the teaching, you're doing it out of ignorance. So Paul reminds the Corinthian church that he writes the commandments of the Lord. Well, that's Paul. Paul wrote that. No, Paul wrote the commandments of the Lord. That's what he did. So, so you fall out with Paul, you fall out with the Lord. Okay. All right. All right. So listen, here, here's the summation of the whole thing. Let's, he said, let's conclude. Uh, let's look at the conclusion of the whole matter. What has all this all been about? 1 Corinthians 14, 39 through 40. Therefore, brother, desire earnestly to prophesy and not forbid speaking to speak in tongues. Here you are again. Uh, this, this whole chapter, even way back up, uh, we looked last week, he talked about prophesying and speaking in tongues. Prophecy is speaking for understanding to prophesy desire to speak for understanding but do not forbid with tongues tongues must be used in the right manner so don't don't cut off the tongues being used but they got to be used in the right manner which is what there's got to be interpretation there's got to be interpretation that's tongues being in the in used in the right manner listen to what he says then let all things be done decently and in order. This whole passage is about decently and in order. Remember earlier he said that God was not the author of confusion, but of peace in all of it. Listen, listen, listen. When things are done decently in order, he's the way he's prescribed them there, there's edification. There's the building up of people in God, but there's also the glorification of God because everything needs to point people to God. Everything needs to point people to God. So he says, let all things be, all things, all things be done decently and in, in order. 
So Paul, Paul writes about orderly worship, and there's things that we've seen and things that are going on that uh, this this needs to be reviewed by some things we see, not by not by the ones who are looking in, but the ones who are doing it, because some things we see today are not being done. It's 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 being it's been learned, it's being practiced, but it doesn't fit when Paul says all things being done decently and in in order. God is not the author author of confusion. He's not the author of confusion. So Paul says, don't 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 do things that's going to be confusing, and specifically here when he talks about prophesying. And speaking in tongues, that there's a right way for it to be done. And with them being done the right way, everything else ought to be done the right way. Why? Because people need to be edified and built up in God. Pray with me. Father, thank you for your word. Um, I pray that you would take increase our understanding in your word of how things should be done in a right manner. Um not doing it uh, in the preferences of men, not doing it just because we see someone else doing it, but in a right manner according to your word, that your people will be edified and you'll be glorified. Thank you now. Bless you. You are good and kind. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, again, God bless you. So glad you... Uh, came out to be with us, share this word, um, keep coming back, man. If you, I hopefully you've been encouraged to keep coming back in the word of God. And remember, uh, God is good all the time and all the time. God is good.